This is the Your Dollars Making Sense podcast, brought to you by Jamie Blanton with Jacob Title, Bales Property Management and Home Building, SHH Mechanical, Boyle's Tax Service, Coleman Appliance Repair, 412 Pub House, Anytime Fitness, and Cotton Home Inspections. Hey everybody, Richard Neese here. Welcome to Your Dollars Making Sense. We believe that financial intelligence is the key to financial freedom. We appreciate you guys tuning in, whether it's on WKUL, whether it's on our um, our app, whether it's on our podcasts on Spotify. We appreciate you guys so much. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I hope that you get something out of it. The whole point of Your Dollars Making Sense is to build your financial intelligence, to help you have that foundation so you can figure out what the best investments are. And we want to compare investments apples to apples, want to help you achieve financial freedom. That's the whole goal. Uh, if you don't know me, my name's Richard Neese. I'm a real estate broker here in North Alabama. Uh, I used to do a show called The Real Estate Rundown, and we moved on to start working with your dollars making sense because I keep having people call me weekly, uh, twice a week. Hey, let's sit down. Let's talk about investing. Let's talk about real estate. Let's talk about financial freedom. So I wanted to, to give a platform. I wanted to put an information, put the information out there so you can take it in from, from your home at any time and really start building to get to that better life, to, to find out what retirement sounds like or what it looks like, to find out what financial freedom is, whether you're 18 or, or 65, there's no bad day to start planning for your future. Uh, the best day is always yesterday. The second best day is always today to start on that. So like I said, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Today, we're going to be uh, changing gears a little bit. Uh, last week, no, I'm sorry, it's been a couple weeks ago, I told uh, my listeners, I told you guys, and actually I've been given away a book uh, by George S. Clayson. Uh, it's the richest man in Babylon. If you guys haven't read this book and you want, uh, if you want one, give me a call, shoot me a text message, hit me up on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I will get you a copy of this book because believe it or not, 144 pages could change your life. Less than that could change your life. Uh, reading one book and putting it into practice could could change your financial future. It could change your family's uh, place as far as finances go for generations to come. And this book talks about just that. Uh, you know, to begin with, this was published in 1926. But before that, this was actually se separate pamphlets that were dropped off at financial institutions, at banks, at places like that, so that people could read these small, short stories about financial freedom, about how to put yourself in a better place money-wise. The, the story background starts in Babylon uh, one of the richest areas for a long time. And it wasn't because it was blessed with all sorts of natural resources. It wasn't because it was blessed to be on a trade route from one area to another, but it was because of the ingenuity and the the knowledge and financial intelligence of this area. Uh, the, the people knew how money worked and they made sound investments. And actually, that I mean, that created an environment, a community, a, a, a city in Babylon uh, that the riches were were so great that they were talked about throughout the world during this time. Like I said, this this actually goes through a couple different uh, scenarios, a couple different stories. It's all based around uh, a banker, basically. It's a, a money lender who is the richest man in Babylon. And he talks about his struggles, how he learned uh, the, the hard way sometimes. Sometimes it was through guidance of others. He learned how to become um, the, the richest man in Babylon. And the first story he talks about is actually he, he had lost, he, he was working diligently uh, writing on clay tablets. That's how they, they kept records. And, and throughout this process, he, he met a man that was very wealthy. And he said, if I complete all of these tablets for you in a certain time frame, will you tell me how to become wealthy like you? So uh, when he did that, Believe it or not, he didn't accomplish that task in that time frame. And so when he came back, the wealthy man was very, very upset with him. He ended up uh, kind of pleading for uh, another opportunity. And when he got that opportunity, he took in everything that the, the rich man told him. He, he was learning about uh, bookkeeping, learning about saving. And, and we'll go through that as the day goes on or as the, the show goes on. I just want to kind of give you a quick overview of that. 
it goes through several stories, starting with him and then going down through generations on how he touched other people. It's an incredible book. If you guys haven't read it, uh, like I said, this is um, uh, The Richest Man in Babylon by George Clayson. Over two million copies of this have been sold. Uh, obviously, it's been around for about oh, 90 years, and it's still um, it's still pushing for... Uh, I mean, it's, it's one of the, the most important books in your life if you read this. When you read it, it's, to me, it's like Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's like the Bible. I mean, it's like those. it helps build a foundation that you need. Uh, you know, it's been 1926 was when it was published, over 2 million sold. But let's talk about some of the principles that they start with. And believe it or not, this is not biblical, even though tithing is very similar. It talks about putting back 10%. One of the first lessons uh, that we all have to learn is we all have to learn how to spend less than we make. I'm sorry, we, we got to make sure we spend less than we make. And and what they do is they base that off of a 10% principle. Uh, you want to make sure that you keep 10% of your income for you and live off the rest of that. So live off of 90%, 80%, 70%, but at least 10% is saved. Why is that important? Well, it's because you have to make sure you pay yourself first. Pay yourself 10% so that you can grow that 10%. And I know you're asking me right now, well, I get paid 100% of my money. Why wouldn't I keep it? Well, think about this in the terms of what payments do you have right now? So when you get your paycheck, how many ways is that cut? How many ways is that direct deposited? What What's getting paid out of that first before you ever get to realize that? I think you'll start looking at a house payment, car payments, credit cards, uh, consumer debt in general. All of these people you're paying before you pay yourself. So when you take and live off of that 90%, you're paying yourself 10% and you can grow that 10%. And that's probably the hardest thing to do. And it just goes back to what we've talked about with the Wise Up program, uh, with budgeting in general. You've got to be able to live off of that 90% or you're never, uh, you're never going to be further along than you were 10 years ago, five years ago. So it's important to make sure you, sh- you save that 10%. The next thing you've got to do is you've got to use that 10%, not as an emergency fund, because Murphy's Law is going to happen. Things are going to happen. The water heater is going to break. The car is going to break down. You've got to use that 90% to make that work. I promise you that you will find a way to keep the lights on. You will find a way to keep everything else going off of that 90% if you commit to this. I did it uh, four years ago when I got into real estate. I started realizing I'm not going to have a retirement. I worked at the sheriff's office before. I worked for the federal government in another another job I had. They had retirements built in, so that's what I thought was safe. Guess what? Times are changing. Those aren't guaranteed. With market volatility and everything else, you've got to make sure that you take care of your money. You've got to make sure that you plan for your retirement and not just Social Security or not just some sort of pension that you might have. Pensions are going away. Not Not, not many folks have a full pension anymore. Uh, so if you're one of those folks, you're lucky, you're luckier than most, but you've got to take that 10% and help it grow. So you use the save money to make more money. And, and we've got, I'm, I'm going to look for that quote real quick. I've got it right here. Uh, you want to make thy gold multiply, obviously. But you want to make each copper or each dollar your worker. Your slave is what it says. But you want to make each each dollar your worker. Once you do that, then you've got more people working for you than just yourself. When you go out and work a day job or work two jobs, you have to you're exchanging time for money. When you have investments, the whole point is to make those dollars work for you so you're getting a percentage of that off of them. And then that just rolls into the next thing. What what do you do with that money? Well, you do it again. You keep investing until you have enough cash flow enough residual income coming in that supports you. So I've already run through my first nine minutes. Uh, This is a great book. We're going to hit it up on the other side. One thing I do want to do is I want to thank the the sponsors of our show. We've got so many great sponsors out there that believe in investing, not in just things, but in our community. They believe in investing in this radio show, in our community, in uh, uh, nonprofits, you know, whether it's Saving Forgotten Warriors or Coleman Caring for Kids or whatever nonprofit it might be. There's so many great folks out there. You know, Chris Cotton with Cotton Home Inspections. Chris is a, a great influence on so many lives. And you've got a lot, a lot of good folks out there, but our sponsors were very appreciative. Uh, Christy Bowles of Bowles Tax Keeping. 
Uh, thank you guys so much for sponsoring the show. Uh, thank you for your support, not only in the show, but in everything that we do. We believe in helping good people get to a better place. Make sure you tune back in on the second segment where we're going to continue going through The Richest Man in Babylon. This is the Your Dollars Making Sense podcast brought to you by Jamie Blanton with Jacob Title, Bales Property Management and Home Building, SHH Mechanical, Boyle's Tax Service, Coleman Appliance Repair, 412 Pub House, Anytime Fitness, and Cotton Home Inspections. Welcome back to Your Dollars Making Sense. I'm the host, Richard Neese. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Today we're discussing the richest man in Babylon. So I challenge my listeners, I challenge the folks that are around me on a constant basis, but the challenge for last month was to read The Richest Man in Babylon and to see how your take is similar, how it differs from my take, so we can continue uh, this path of self-improvement, self-development. We want to help you build a foundation uh, for uh, so that you so that you can grow and learn. And you know, we honestly believe that financial intelligence is the key to financial freedom, and that's why we're trying to give you that information to build off of, so you can be financially free. Because guess what? When you're financially free, when you when you have more income coming in than you have out out going out. What can you do? You can give more to your church. You can take take a more active life or a more active role in your kid's life. You you can build things that that other folks can't do. You can spend time volunteering. Uh, you, you can constantly be improving the the situation in the world around you, and that's huge. That's why we do what we do on a daily basis. It's not a number in the bank account. Uh, th- there's no lump sum of money that's going to keep you. Uh, protected the rest of your life. No lump sum because you can spend a lot more than you can make, I promise you. But if you have the the financial intelligence, the discipline to stay on track, then you're never going to have a problem with money because you'll, you, you, you'll use these foundations, these principles to guide you the rest of your life. So I found that quote, I was looking through my notes and it says, every gold piece you save is a slave to work for you. Every copper piece it earns is its child that also can earn for you. Meaning your money makes money. That money makes more money for you. If, if you use your money in sound investments, whether that's real estate, whether that's in a business, whatever that might be, that's going to help you down the road because you'll have passive income. You'll have residual income coming in on a daily basis, monthly basis. And people call that mailbox money. It's not because you haven't earned it. Um, but my, my definition of earning money is a little bit different than what, what most people are. I don't like to trade time for money. Everybody does it. Uh, everybody has done it. I promise you that. Uh, but once you get to a point where you realize that um, using your money, using your expertise, using your knowledge can help make you more money, then, then you stop worrying so much about how many hours are in the day because you've got that every gold piece and that copper piece working for you. <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to talk about, and it kind of went hand in hand, this point, ad- advice from you want to make sure that you have advice from skilled people, people that are in that industry. So if, if you're going to talk to the banker about construction, that's probably not the best fit. The banker should know money better than anybody else around. If you're going to talk to the builder about how to run a business, typically that's not the case. The builder is great at building. If you want to talk to a real estate agent about real estate, that's what you need to do. That's going to be the expert in that field. And there was a story in The Richest Man in Babylon that talks about this. Um, the, the, the young bank, I'm sorry, the, the, the kind of main character that's built around, he saved his money for one full year. He saved his 10%. It got easy. He was so proud. And he said, I'm going to make an investment. So he talked with a, a brick mason, a bricklayer, and the bricklayer was going to go to a foreign town and he was going to buy jewels, bring it back and make a handsome return. Well, this goes hand in hand with what I'm talking about. We want to get advice from folks that are skilled in that field. When the brick mason, the bricklayer went and got it, he actually bought glass, pieces of glass that were dolled up. It wasn't actually jewelry. So they had overpaid. They lost all their money on it. And he learned a valuable lesson. And that lesson was make sure that you use folks that know what they're doing, know what they're talking about. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have more money than you or whatever. But if you're going to go and you're going to buy jewelry, Make sure you talk to a jeweler, somebody that's done it before, somebody that can verify that it's in good condition. If you're going to start um, building houses, make sure you do it with somebody that's done it before, that you know they have a track record. 
investing in the stock market. Don't just go out there and, and shoot from the hip and try and figure it out. There are folks that are doing it successfully. Make sure you talk with those people in order to get the best return for your money because that's money that should be working for you. Just because you make an investment doesn't make mean it's a sound investment. So that's huge. Um, the, the next time that he did that, he invested with uh, somebody that was a shield maker uh, and he bought the materials for the shield maker and they sold it for a good profit every time for, for years on end. So he learned a valuable lesson in that. And I think we've all been guilty of that. You know, there's so much going on with the with, on the Internet and infomercials and everybody wants you to invest and everybody wants you to do this and spend money on this or that. There's quick money, quick return. That, that's not always the best option. Make sure it's a sound investment. That's why we provide the platform we do. We're not pitching our services. We're trying to let you have that knowledge, uh, that information, so you can make a good decision after everything's said and done. Uh, and then one thing that I kind of touched on earlier is don't wish for a, a lump sum. So one of the stories talks about a young man that took part of his father's inheritance and went out and he said, if you can give me return on this inheritance and show me how much money you've made, then I'll give you the rest of your inheritance. Well, as you can probably guess, the, the man squandered the, the money. He actually gave him a lump sum and then he also gave him tablets, which were uh, inscribed on them were all of his rules for making money and how to save money and how to invest. Well, the first thing he did was he tried to invest the money and lost the money, all of it, to the point where uh, he was desolate. And so then he realized, hey, I've got two things. I've got tablets. I can review what is already known, what my father's already proven. And that's where I keep going back to there's, there's so many resources out there. We've got great books. You've got great mentors that can help you through this process. Learn first, and that way you won't lose money on the front end. Now, after the man read the tablets, he started understanding, made small investments, and ended up having a great wealth when he came back to his father in 10 years. He didn't go back and ask for more money. He showed him, I've learned the way to make more money, which is huge. You know, we've got so many different things on here. Uh, th there were so many points to hit, but I think we've discussed a lot of them. I'm going to hit the last few things on the other side, mainly talking about clouding your judgment through greed. Uh, in, in investing in yourself, which I, obviously, you know, I, I love talking about self-improvement and how to make yourself better, how to skill up. Uh, that's going to be on the other side of the break. Like I said, we want to thank a couple more of our sponsors. We've got Dale Bells with Bells Home Builders. Thank you guys so much. Dale's got several subdivisions going up right now. We love helping him. We've got Robert Brantley with Coleman Appliance and Repair. Now, Robert helps me, uh, I would say, probably weekly, if not uh, every other week. Uh, with the apartments that we have going in. We've also got uh, Steadfast Painting. They're going to be doing some a job on a flip house that we're doing uh, here soon. Thank you guys so much for contributing. Thank you for uh, putting your heart and soul in this and, and helping us help more people. Because like I said, we believe in helping good people get to a better place. The reason for this show is because we believe that financial intelligence is the key to your financial freedom. This is the Your Dollars Making Sense podcast brought to you by Jamie Blanton with Jacob Title, Bales Property Management and Home Building, SHH Mechanical, Boyle's Tax Service, Coleman Appliance Repair, 412 Pub House, Anytime Fitness, and Cotton Home Inspections. Hey everybody, Richard Neese here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the third and final segment of Your Dollars Making Sense. We're talking about The Richest Man in Babylon. If you guys haven't heard of this book, you need to pick it up. Uh, if you can't pick it up, give me a call and I'll send it to you. Uh, we've got about 15 copies left. We've given out 15 so far. I'll give it out to anybody that wants to change their life because that's how powerful this book can be if you apply the principles. It doesn't take much, 10% uh, of your income to begin with. I know that sounds scary, but you can do it. Live off of 90%. That was the first principle, is spend less than you make. Uh, one of the things that we're kind of finishing out with We've got four or five stories inside of this book, which it, it's a great read, 144 pages. Uh, it'll take you probably two or three days. Uh, small print, I mean, a uh, large print, small book. It's, it's a pretty easy read. Foolish use of money empties purses. So I know we've got this uh, buy here, pay here. We constantly want instant gratification culture. Uh, I promise you that that brand new F-250 that costs you 50 grand Unless you're hauling something with it that's making you money, it's it's probably uh, not a great investment. Now, you may look awful cool at it, and I'm sorry if I'm hurting some feelings out here, 
If you want to achieve financial freedom, the first thing you need to do is start finding assets. You need to start finding ways to make money so that it can pay for that big truck or so that it can pay for that brand new Corvette or whatever you're driving out there. Most cases, vehicles are not great investments. Now, there's always a different, uh, different options out there. If you're a classic car collector and you can make money off a of flip, uh, if, if you know how to fix things, that there's obviously work involved. If you're just going to buy a fifty thousand dollar truck just to have it, I, I'd I'd be careful. If you want to reach financial freedom, that can be a big step backwards. So make sure that your lifestyle that you're living is in accordance with where you want to be at in ten years. That's that's a big thing. With foolish use empties purses. Now, one thing that I always get excited about is self improvement, reading books, going to conferences, uh, getting around mentors, getting around entrepreneur groups, things like that just diving in, whether it's just on YouTube. I mean, there's so many free resources out there. Invest in your ability to earn. There's a great story uh, I've seen in uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, where there's this great writer talking to Robert Kiyosaki, and she's got a well-written book. She she is this incredible scholar, but her books aren't selling. She doesn't know why, so she asked Robert Kiyosaki. And Kiyosaki said, you're missing one skill. What is that skill? For her, it was salesmanship. It was being able to promote. She didn't know how to do that. So it doesn't matter how great her product was, she was never going to be a bestseller. Uh, she refused to pick up that extra skill. So right now, if you're looking and you're making uh, $5 an hour, $8 an hour, $20 an hour, $30 an hour, it doesn't matter. Um, if you're making that and you want to know how to do better, do more, you've got to skill up. You've got to find another skill set. You've got to create a side hustle. You've got to add value to the marketplace. What do I mean by that? Well, if, if you're a laborer uh, and, and you can learn how to be a, a better carpenter, you just add another skill. Maybe you learn how to weld and you can weld better than anybody else around. That makes you more valuable than the guy that doesn't really care, but he can halfway weld. It doesn't matter what field you're in, whether it's the military, whether it's the private sector. It doesn't matter if you're on radio. Find out how to do a better job on the radio. Uh, real estate agents add value in another way. When you add that skill, then you'll be rewarded for that. That's the biggest thing. You've got to invest in yourself. And that's I've had people ask me several times, hey, I've got 500 to 1,000 bucks. What do I need to invest in to make the most amount of money possible? And I always tell them, invest in yourself. Is there something you want to do? Go take a course. Go take a seminar. Go start a business. That With that amount of money, there's not a whole lot you're going to be able to do real estate wise, or even in the, in the stock market. But the things you can create through your efforts, through skilling up with that $500,000 can, can multiply a hundredfold. And, and I know this because I've done this. I cashed out of two retirements, military and law enforcement, to start in real estate. There was no guarantee of return. But I said, I'm going to do something with this money. So that was my marketing dollars. That was how I got through for the first six months. So when I did that, it turned into something that has easily replaced itself almost a hundredfold. So, so think about that. You can take small amounts of money. You can take l large amounts of effort, skill up, learn something new, improve, you know, learn how to connect with people better, learn how to network. One connection could be the difference between you working at a job for the rest of your life or for you being a multimillionaire. One connection. And I truly believe that. So you've got to invest in yourself and your ability to earn more and to gain more skill. And the last thing I want to leave on, it's kind of a, it's a, I guess it's a negative note, but it's important to note. When you get into the investing world, there's always going to be that home run sitting out there. Don't let the idea of huge profits cloud your judgment. It may be a solid investment that makes you a hundred times the return, or it may be somebody looking to snatch your money. And that, that happens all too often. People buy into a course, people buy into an investment and get stuck with it. So with all that being said, you know, we're here to help good people get to a better place on a daily basis. If you're looking to uh, improve yourself, if you want to get to a better place, if you want to learn about finances, if you want to learn about investing, please tune in, check out our podcast on Spotify. Uh, you can listen to us on WKUL Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Thank you guys so much for listening in. If you want a copy of uh, The Richest Man in Babylon, just let me know. We'll get that to you. You can call me at 256-708-1511. We're going to be doing a new, book, a new book this month. 
I haven't picked it out yet. I'll probably pick it out next week, and then I'll let you guys know if you want to follow along. Thank you guys so much for everything you do. Uh, if you guys ever need anything, you can always give me a holler, like I said. We appreciate you guys. Hope you guys have a great week.